Brody, I've been working on something. I'm excited to show it to you and the Hoop Plug family because I got the NBA tiers based on teams for the regular season. I'm going to run it by you. Let me hear what you think, brother. I'm going to start from the bottom, right? This is the teams that, you know, they're not really thinking about a championship, and I'm not breaking any news by saying it. I'm calling these guys, (laughs) this ragtag bunch of squads, the Wimbayama lovers. Okay, Charlotte Hornets, (laughs) OKC, Indiana Pacers, Houston Rockets, San Antonio Spurs, and the Utah Jazz. Those are my Wimbayama lovers. They're looking forward to the lottery from game one of 82. How you feel about that list? Yeah, everyone I agree. The one that I might think, okay, is an asterisk next to it are probably the San Antonio Spurs. Because when you have Greg Popovich at the helm, he's always going to try to win. Always going to try to do as best as the team can do. Don't get me wrong. You add Webb and Yama to the squad, <laughs> the Spurs are going to be good for another 15 to 20 years. And I'm talking playoffs and potential championship contenders. So, I mean, obviously, who doesn't want to be in that sweepstakes? But I think you got that bunch of teams. Well, okay, bet. And the way you describe the San Antonio Spurs, they might fit into this next category, even though I didn't give them the nod. And that is will be win by on the lovers by all-star game because they're going to try to win, but they ain't going to try too hard. And especially if it's not looking too good, you know, there's 30, 35 games left. Ah, number one option, you can take a day. Number two option, you can take a couple. <laughs> What's that? Your wrist hurt? What's that? Your feelings hurt? Sit it down. All right. And for that squad, I got the Washington Wizards. Yes, we know they're talented, but Bradley Bill always seems to get hurt, unfortunately. Who knows if they don't blow it up by All-Star Game. Sacramento Kings. De'Aaron Fox is going to try really hard. They've missed the playoffs for God knows how many years in a row. So they're going to want to win and get into that play-in. But I don't think they're going to have a great shot. Orlando Magic. Only because of Paolo Benchero had they made it to the will-be category. And they are not in the debts of hell. (laughs) But the last team on this list, Detroit Pistons. All right, I like what they have, man. They got a nice backcourt with Cade Cunningham and my boy, the wannabe Nick. I wanted him to be a Nick. Jaden Ivey. So I think they're going to make some noise until about All-Star game when they start shutting that down. Yeah, 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 basically. They're going to try, but they're not going to succeed. And then they're going to be like, let's roll the dice. You know what I'm saying? So. Okay, this is where uh, I probably upset some folks, okay? Because we got the last two tiers laid down. That foundation of crap is is there for us to (laughs) step up, get some wins, and elevate into the top ranks of the NBA. But some people aren't going to be too happy to find their teams lower than they expected. Not sure if they're good, not sure if they're bad. This tier is compromised of three teams, the first being the Trailblazers. Yes, they have Damian Lillard coming back. But C.J. McCollum is gone. The heart and soul is still with them in in Dame. But I'm not sure how much he can do on his own. Los Angeles Lakers. Who knows how good the Los Angeles Lakers can be? They have the greatest variance, I think, of any team, along with the Brooklyn Nets, in terms of it can go great and it can go really bad. But, again, I'm not too sure how it plays out, especially with the Russell Westbrook decision looming. And then... The Chicago Bulls. Yes, I said it. Lonzo, we don't know when he's coming back. Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, they're good. But I could see them getting rid of DeMar, Vooch, and even more pieces if they don't get off to a good start. Wish I could disagree with you. But I know realistically that's where we are. And especially with Lonzo out, I don't think we're going to be able to make the full impact that we wanted to do when they sign all the pieces, right? They needed Lonzo at the helm to be able to kind of you know, man the fort and run this offense. But, yeah, until that happens and until, you know, Vooch is able to pick up his his poor performance from last season, I don't – wish I could disagree with you, but I think that's reasonable. All right. So there was a middling team that I couldn't figure out what bucket to put in, and they're floating between that last category, that last tier, not sure if they're good or bad, and the next tier. And that team was my own, the Knicks – Nah, you got to put them in the same category as the Bulls, bro. That's the only way I'll accept that. That's just Homer. I had the hoodie on. I was feeling my side. My squad. All right. Nah, nah. I feel you. I feel you. Jalen Brunson's there. Mitchell Robinson's back. RJ Baird's about to have a great season. But <laughs> I don't know if we're quite there just yet. Fair. Good, but no chance at the finals. This is the most populated tier in my rankings, all right? 
So first on the good but no chance at the finals, Minnesota T Wolves. We've talked about it. Yeah. Rudy Gobert's impact will be felt, but mostly in the regular season. Come postseason time, I think he gets played off the court and their hopes go with that. Cleveland Cavaliers, yeah. Donovan Mitchell is going to be great for this squad, but it's at least one year early for them to be real finals contenders. Toronto Raptors, yep. this Nick Nurse bunch is always scrappy. Pascal, Freddie, Van Vliet, they're going to be good, but not good enough. Atlanta Hawks, new backcourt, going to need some time to adjust, in my opinion, even though they look pretty good in this preseason so far. And then Nola, New Orleans Pelicans, if there was a team that could bust out of this tier... I think they're the candidate because Zion's upside is True. without a ceiling. And um, I really like what they got cooking. Yeah, man. And B.I., we know what he does. So I think, yeah, this team is really starting to build. I think this is really the year for the Pelicans to prove everybody wrong. Word. If there was another team, maybe the Cavs or the T-Wolves, did you, could you see anyone else breaking out of this tier? I don't think so. I don't think so. We we know of the limitations of the Timberwolves, um, the Hawks. I think DeJounte Murray is good. I don't think he's good enough where you're thinking, oh, Trey Young and, and DeJounte Murray is going to win you a championship. That's how I feel about it. I mean, even though John Collins was going off, DeJounte Murray was going off, Trey Young was going off in their preseason game. I think the Pelicans, and it's really because you have Zion, who in limited time has averaged 26 and 7 or whatever it was, right? Yeah, He's going to be a star. Like, you're getting 30 points and 10 rebounds that you didn't have last season. Facts. Like, you're – so, sky's the limit. He's in shape. And I think that's that's why we all feel the same way about the Pelicans, you know? Word. And then on the downside and they got of CJ McCollum, and they got Brandon Ingram. Sorry to cut you off. Like, they, they and, got a and team. And Alvarado and – uh, yeah, and the sharpshooter that came from Charlotte, the point guard that's kind of small. Either yeah, way, yeah, yeah. They've, they've got some guys and a good coach. So, yeah, they do. All right, if there was one more team that I, I had struggled with in this rankings in this tier, it was the Raptors. I had them, like I said, in the good, but no chance at the finals. But I wasn't sure they didn't quite belong a tier down with the not sure if they're good or bad. It seems like they always pump out winning seasons, and that was my biggest justification for putting them up. What do you think about that one? And this is regarding, sorry, the you've broken up just for a second. Toronto Raptors. Ah, man, I don't know. I'm not sold on the Raptors whatsoever. But like you said, you can't disrespect the history. So we know what they do every year. Every single year, I'm like, oh, they're going to be one of the worst teams. I think Spicy P is horrible. Not only is he horrible, that's one of the worst <laughs> nicknames in NBA history. He hasn't got but. No, at all. And I think it was just, you know, he had a great season one time. Kawhi was there. They won a championship. And then I think that, you know, gave them a little bit more credibility than they deserved. But I'm going to be honest with you. After seeing how this team has operated after the departure of Kyrie, hats off to Nick Nurse. Because he was able to take what was left of a championship team and actually keep them in the mix and, like, Kawhi Leonard is, you know, a generational talent. It's not, you're not going to get a Kawhi Leonard every single day, you know? And so the fact that you were losing that from your team, from a championship team, I didn't expect them to even make the playoffs for the next three or four years. They made the playoffs, I'm pretty sure, every year since the championship, you know? Yeah. So shouts and out to Nick Nurse. Kyle Lowry, the heart and soul, leaving too. Leaving too, man. And that's the thing. Um, the Toronto Raptors absolutely hustled the Miami Heat. Was it was it a sign and trade or was it excuse me, was it a trade or was it a free agency signing? I, I can't remember. Yeah, me either. But regardless, honestly, the Raptors got rid of Kyle Lowry at the perfect time to get rid of him. Because I mean, you know what he's doing down in Miami. He's just hustling them for their money right now. So I don't yeah, know. But yeah. So that's that's how I feel about the squad. Like I personally don't think that they're good, but at the end of the day, the numbers don't lie, and they win enough games to be in the playoff conversation. So I think they deserve to be there. But to be quite frank, though, if if we're giving it to them, we got to move the Bulls up. <laughs> and the Knicks, shit. <laughs> that's the only way to get you to move the Bulls. Ah, <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna let you move it on yours. <laughs> All right, next year. <laughs> They're great, but I'm not convinced. And I'm not convinced about finals. I'm just not convinced and sold on these squads. All right, I got four in the mix, starting with the Brooklyn Nets. For obvious reasons, channeling my Stephen A. Uh, Brooklyn. <laughs> Stephen A was getting mixy this weekend. But Brooklyn, yo, we know why. Steve Nash at the helm. I, I can't trust you. And then Phoenix Suns, turmoil. They've been one of the best teams in the league, and I'm not overstating when I say that for the last two, three years coming off yep. of a, 
a season where they let, lost less than 20 games, which is crazy in the track record for them. Teams like that that have done that in the next year is crazy. They've won at least 50 games every time. Miami Heat, they are always good, but I'm still not convinced Jimmy Butler can be a championship winning first option. And then Dallas Mavericks, this is kind of the opposite of that team. I am convinced Luka can be a championship winning first option, but I'm not sure the team around him is good enough. Any gripes? Yep. No, no gripes at all. I think you hit it on the head, especially with the Phoenix Suns, man. Um, this is a team expected to take the next step so many times, and they've just been falling short. So I think that's the perfect place to have them. Yeah, and you can argue, when does the CP3 attrition, when does that start to age? Or is he just LeBron in a smaller package in terms of his Iron Man abilities? All right, next so it up. it seems like. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised, right? I wouldn't be surprised if they make it all the way to the – Last seven game series of the season, three teams in this mix, Denver Nuggets, Philadelphia 76ers, and Shocker, the Memphis Grizzlies. Man, Memphis, I, I saw John Morant this preseason. I don't know if it's possible, but he looks quicker. He looks faster, and that's scary. Uh, the Philadelphia 76ers, James Harden is talking like he's an MVP for him. Doc Rivers is saying he thinks that's real. And and Joel Embiid is quite frankly, for the last two years, he's probably been second or third in the MVP voting at each of the last two years, barring yeah. health. And then Denver, they're back healthy, bro. That's a scary sight. Facts. You mentioned it. My favorite one, honestly, the 76ers, because I think this is really the year where they take that step. Perfectly said. I mean, so far, we haven't really had too many uh, disagreeances, but yeah. All right, all right. Then we'll get to the last tier, the upper echelon. Golden State Warriors, we know what they've done. Milwaukee Bucks, best player in the league. Los Angeles Clippers, deepest roster in the league. Boston Celtics, they just came off of it. I think this is the clear top four teams in the NBA for the next season. For no us. Doubt. No doubt. You said it. You said it. Um, those are the guys who are going to contend for a championship. There's no doubt about it. They're hungry. Um, they're poised. The teams are ready. You know, they built enough off of last season. They made good moves in the offseason um, to maintain that. You know, I think those are the teams to beat. No doubt. Um, you got the, the championship winner. You got the guys coming off the finals. I mean, those are the four teams to beat. You're surprised Giannis wasn't even in the championship game, period. Like, you know, you're surprised the Celtics beat them, which hats off to them, man. It shows how good this team was last year. So, yeah, I think you've got you've hit the nail on the head, bro. It's going to be interesting to see how the teams move in between the tiers, right? Because the Boston Celtics, they're going to be having issues with coaching and his suspension, I'm pretty sure, and everything like that. So let's see how that impacts the team. I mean, Golden State with the Draymond Jordan pool beef. We'll see how that impacts the team. Giannis and them boys, maybe they step out to be the clear-cut favorite. Um, you know, bro. So there's going to be a lot of things. And even in those lower categories, I really anticipate the Chicago Bulls, man, moving up and performing a little bit better. Without Lonzo, you know, <laughs> without Lonzo Ball, it's going to be tough. But, you know, we're getting Caruso back, and I think with everyone that we've gotten back, and I think if Vooch can take that next step um, to really just be consistent, we're not asking him for 20 and 10 to be an all-star, but just give us 15 and 8, 15 and 10, 15 and 11. That would be fantastic, you know? So um, a lot of teams have the ability to do this. I anticipate, especially with Danny Ainge at the helm, that the Utah Jazz will somehow end up with Victor Webanyama. I don't know how. But I think they'll find a way. So, yeah, man, I know that's what they're hoping for. Um, yeah. With the new odds, they're not even that new anymore, but you can, you're maxing out at a 14% chance at the number one pick, no matter how bad you are. Yeah. So it, it's pretty wide open. Uh, it is. It is. We're going to see. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a race like no other. There's already people talking crazy. He's the best prospect. If LeBron was in this draft, Victor would still go number one. I heard that, yeah. Yeah. Richard yeah. Jefferson, let's hold him accountable. <laughs> yeah, that was RJ. Yeah, Richard Jefferson you... said that. <laughs> um, I have about? seen the highlights, bro. He looks great. I've never seen someone that tall and, and small enough of a frame, you know, barring KD, 
right? But even taller than KD, who can move the way that he does. It's it's the step backs, it's the hesitations, it's the ability to get to the cup, it's the ability to have that same athleticism on defense, right? You expect a guy who's seven foot to just stand near the paint and block shots and maybe, you know, post up or get a pick and roll bucket every once in a while, right? This guy is eating off the one-on-one situations. He's you know, one on one at the top of the key, he can hit you with the three, he can hit you with the mid-range, he can hit you with the fadeaway, he can hit you with the post-up fadeaway, he can get to the cup. This guy can do it all. I'm surprised. Like, I'm shocked. Don't get me wrong, right? When RJ said that, I get where he's coming from. Let's talk about just the physical specimen of it. You have somebody who's seven foot four, who could jump through the roof, who has a cr- the craziest wingspan we've ever seen, who can also shoot the three and shoot free throws and shoot the mid-range and facilitate and play defense like... We're drooling here. (laughs) You know what I mean? But um, LeBron is LeBron. He's the most dominant high school player of all time. At the end of the day, Victor Webinyama is doing this in Europe, in France, which is not even one of the stronger European leagues, right? Um, He's not doing it in the American high school system. He's not doing it in the collegiate system. So don't get me wrong. At the end of the day, these are professionals. They are professionals. He's a professional, right? Um, He's playing good enough competition. But let's see. Let's see. I mean, at the end of the day, the game against the first game against the G League Ignite, Scoot Henderson, I would argue, got the best of him. He didn't have the better stat line, but his team won the game and he had 28 and 10, where Victor had 35 and I think it was five or six blocks, which is ridiculous. But yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't want to pick him apart, but I have some questions, right? Like he's playing 30, 35 minutes. He, he's only coming down with four rebounds. Like yeah. Seven foot four. Come yeah, on, bro. four rebounds at seven for four. Facts. That's a little concerning. He is built like a toothpick. I think we need to slow down. I think we need to slow down a little bit. I'm the only one saying it, but damn it, LeBron was <laughs> built like a like a brick house at 18, yeah. like a Victor's grown man, like a feather. Like, I, and and the defense is really interesting. Like you said, this the way he moves. He doesn't move even like Chet. Chet at seven two, seven three. He still looks like a vampire, and he moves like a dinosaur. Victor doesn't move like that. No, and it's at all. it's it's kind of weird. It's kind of crazy to see. Um, we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll see. He's gonna go number one. I think that's given now. But I'm not sold on him in the NBA. Oh yeah. Some questions. I've got some questions. Yeah. He will yeah. get roughed up his first couple seasons until he adds some weight to the frame. But, Absolutely. I think that's yeah. for sure. But everyone's just like, okay, but three years after that, is that such a given? I don't know. I mean, Rudy Gobert came into the league quite skinny as well and didn't have nearly as, as much of a bag as this guy does. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that floor is so high because he's, he's like a unicorn on defense. Yeah. Uh, well, this guy is, yeah, yeah. The floor is high. The expectations are high because he's expected to basically be LeBron, better than LeBron. So I, I did Gobert. see an interview, and that, that impressed me almost as much as the on-court stuff because he is confident. He's cool. He's got some personality to him. He pulled up in the shades. Like, he looks pretty American, like, in terms of culture and stuff. So I think that is all plus um, because it is a big adjustment for 18-year-olds to come to a different country, speaking a different language, and playing what is essentially a different game in the NBA. So uh, those are all things that are working in the court of Victor Wimbayama. But pump the brakes, y'all. Pump the brakes. Just a little bit. Best prospect since LeBron James? Come on. Yeah, man, you said it. You said it. No, RJ, uh, his trigger finger was quick with that one, you know? There's just a lot of guys, man, that have come through. I mean, even guys who didn't even end up performing well in the league. You know, Jabari Parker is one of those guys who comes to mind who was ridiculously recruited. And they were saying he's one of the best since LeBron. And you know all the guys that we're talking about. We'll see. At the end of the day, people just. I don't know. This hype train is chugging right now. It is. It's it's outshining. It's definitely the little engine that could. (laughs) Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. It's true. It's true. And I think the NBA is purposely doing that, right? Because we have, we're not going to see Victor play over in France. You know, you get him against the G League, not the NBA team. So you allow him to definitely still shine, right? He's not playing against the best of the best, but pretty damn close to the best of the best. Um, but he's still able to shine. And I think that was, it was done on purpose. 
You're you right. Know? That's it was done call. on purpose. It was definitely yeah. intentionally done. The timing of it, you got him in the same town, in the same gym as LeBron is playing with AD the same night. Like, that is all intentional. Yeah, they're trying to grow the international game, you know? So David Silver was like, this is perfect. <laughs> Adam Silver, Lord. sorry. Yeah, yeah. I got you. We got you. All right, bro. That's going to do it. Before we wrap this up, we just want to give y'all a quick message from the sponsor, EvanAlexanderGrooming.com, y'all. The beard. The beard, guys. Take care of it. You can't just wash it with soap. Don't be nasty. You need some products that are designed for the beard to keep you looking right. Yes, sir. Uh, if you need anything for your beard, your hair, your skin, anything at all, man, EvanAlexanderGrooming.com is the place for you to go and don't forget to put code hoop underscore plug underscore at checkout for 20 percent off plus you put a little money in your boys pockets right supporting evan alexander grooming.com is supporting the hoop plug which in turn is supporting yourself and a great man once said don't ever play yourself you know um with that being said that'll do it for another episode of the hoop plug and as always guys Put some flavor in your ear. Peace.